Hello everyone and welcome back to 10 Things About Writing. Today I'm going to talk about a topic not covered in my book, which is that of short fiction. Now I love short fiction, I've written a fair bit myself, but I'm worried that some people starting off writing have been encouraged to believe that short fiction is where they should start and then build up to something longer. Now, this is looking at it completely the wrong way round. By all means, write short fiction if short fiction appeals to you, if you like the way short fiction works, if you've read a lot of short fiction, by all means, write short fiction. But it is not an easy entry into writing a novel. They are two completely different things with completely different skill sets and both are equally difficult. Just because something's short doesn't make it easy to write and to really be able to, to master the short fiction genre, you have not only to have studied short fiction writers, but to have had an awful lot of practice within that quite restrictive medium. Now, there are lots of things you can get away with when you're writing a novel. You can get away with a slight bagginess in construction. You can get away with slightly overwritten prose. Um, you can get away with, with a confusing cast of, of characters. Um, you can't do any of that with short fiction. Short fiction is extremely unforgiving. If you get anything wrong with the construction or the tension or the narrative, or the characters, you are going to get an instant rejection from your audience. Whereas with a slightly baggy novel, I can give it a hundred pages to get going. With a short story, your average reader is going to turn off after the first paragraph if they don't feel that you are going to tell them something that they want to know. And so everything in a piece of short writing has to be thought out and planned and structured at least as carefully, if not more so than a novel. Now, some of the basic rules of the novel also apply to short fiction, but they're two very different creatures and you should know instinctively whether the story you want to tell is a short story or whether it's going to be a novel. For a start, um, a novel tends to have more characters, it tends to have subplots, it can sometimes have multiple timelines and it usually extends over a, a longer period of time than a short story. Most short stories really are about one incident or one little moment in time. And so they're handled slightly differently and short stories can have an equal amount of excitement and tension as a novel, but they are not meant to replace a novel or shorten a novel. And in the same way, it's very difficult to extend a short story into a novel. Um, some people think that they can do this and it's it has been done, but mostly not very well. Mostly trying to make a short story grow into a novel is a bit like feeding your cat in the hope that it's going to turn into a tiger. It may just not be meant to be a tiger. It may it may be meant to be a cat. And what you will get if you overfeed it is just a very fat cat. Um, and I've read a lot of short stories that have been built on the same principle. Now, a short story has to have a really strong opening. With a short story, you don't have the privilege of 100 pages or even five pages to get your audience involved. You have to pitch them into the world as quickly as possible. You have to get to keep them there. You have to you have to maintain the tension without any kind of release. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that short stories all have to be very tense or very exciting. Short stories don't always have to have a sting in the tail, but they do have to have a story. And when I've judged short story competitions, I've seen a lot of really good pieces of mood writing presented as short stories, but they don't have a plot. And a short story needs to have a plot. It needs to have an actual story to tell because otherwise it's a nice exercise in style, but it's not something which is necessarily going to engage a reader expecting an actual story. And of course, readers tend to to read short stories in slightly different ways to the way they read novels. 
I think a short story, you have to approach it knowing that if it works, your reader should have the opportunity to pause at the end of it, think about what they've learnt, and they should be able to carry that story around in their memory and perhaps refer back to it and refer to what they have learnt from it. I find certainly that a really good short story sticks in my mind more than a novel. Um, I have read short stories 30, 40 years ago that I remember in some detail, whereas novels that I've read that time ago, eh, the details kind of escape me. A short story, well written, has got that impact. It's got that memorable impact because what you're really doing is you're delivering one piece of information, one experience. And, and that, if you do it well, will possibly stay in the mind of the reader forever. This is why some people don't like short stories, because it makes them think too much. And what they really would like is to be immersed in a world, to invest in it, to, to stay in it for as long as possible. Now, these people should be reading novels. Um, some people are disappointed with short stories because they feel they're just too short. And perhaps it's because they are not reading them in the same way that a lover of short stories reads. I don't tend to read a whole book of short stories at once. I tend to read one short story at a time, let it gestate, think about it, and then move on to the next one, because otherwise it feels like you're kind of island hopping to different kind of um, different geographies with every story. And yes, that can be confusing. It can be unsatisfying. So when you approach a short story, remember that your readers are going to experience it in that different way and give them something to take home and remember. So you start off with as gripping an opening as you can. And remember what I said about tension before. It doesn't necessarily mean tense or exciting in that way. It doesn't have to be action packed to be a successful short story. There are some very quiet, masterful usages of tension, which still deliver in, in the way that a short story needs to, because obviously, like any story, you have to deliver something worth delivering at the end. I tend to think of it as a sort of walk towards, maybe a walk through the woods towards a vista. The short story is an invitation to accompany you on the walk. At the end, you look out onto something new, a vista, a new path, a scene, a river, a waterfall, something that you hadn't quite expected. And that doesn't mean that I'm saying that short stories should always have a sting in the tail, although sometimes that works really well, but they should deliver something. They should deliver something that makes your reader feel that the journey has been worthwhile. As for language, I like flowery language, I like evocative language, but when I'm writing a short story I know I have to rein myself in with these things because with a short story, unlike with a novel, every word has got to count. Every word has got to deliver something and not just an aesthetic. It has to, it has to be properly integrated into the story. The story has not to go off on a, a kind of stylistic tangent because you can do that in a novel. In a short story your reader gets bored. A short story can be three pages long, 10 pages long, maybe 20 or 30 pages long if you're going into the kind of realm of Stephen King short stories, some of which are not very short at all. But it is a condensed reality. And so you have to condense your style. You have to make sure that you are sticking to the point as much as possible. That doesn't mean that you have to abandon your personal way of expressing yourself. That's, that's not what it means. But you have to be careful. No long descriptive passages, no repetitions, unless you are doing them for a very precise reason. And the same goes for your plot. You have to think of a, a, a short story as a picture being delivered, a postcard, a comment, a slogan, something which delivers one message, one general message and if you find that your story is containing more and more and more stuff and you want to put, you know, past experiences in there and maybe a subplot, then be careful because you're no longer writing a short story. You're writing a synopsis for a novel. And unless a novel is what you want to write, and I would say in that case, go ahead and write it, you don't want to do that. 
A short story, well, first of all, read short stories. Read lots of them. Read short stories by all kinds of people because you know, sometimes the most surprising authors turn out to be masterful short story writers. Um, Shirley Jackson is a wonderful writer of short stories. You may know her um, from We Have Always Lived in the Castle. You may know one short story by her called The Lottery, which is the story that made her famous. It's a wonderful story and it has a proper punch at the end. But she is also a masterful writer of, of other kinds of short fiction. Everything she writes is worth reading, is worth studying. In another genre, P.G. Woodhouse's short stories are great. Um, they properly encompass the world that he's talking about. Um, they're always satisfying. Saki writes wonderful short stories. So does Maupassant. Um, read as many as you can, because writing a short story is not an obvious thing to do if you are not a voracious reader of short stories. What, you, what you'll find is that, you know, you will end up writing something that's not quite satisfactory because writing a short story is a little bit like, like playing a different instrument when you've been used to playing one instrument and you go to another one and it's strung differently and it's in a different key. You have to get the feel of it. Otherwise, you know, just brevity on its own is not going to deliver enough. So good luck with your short stories, everybody. Um, I'll be talking about another topic next time. Meantime, if you want to check out my book, 10 Things About Writing, it's available on Kobo, Amazon, and eventually good bookshops anywhere near you. Bye-bye till next time.